Hi guys, some gamer dude here. So since um, Jojo Retaliation, I've had it on my mind what the sweet point of articulation really is. This is because during the lead up to that movie and the first wave, Hasbro experimented in five point of articulation GI Joes and uh, some rather gimmicky figures, and it made people uh, really angry. They felt betrayed. They felt that the product had been made into trash. So today I want to talk about articulation through the ages. And um, just look at things. And see where articulation went wrong. Where action figures were made out of honestly bad materials. And where things should have stopped. So let's start with... Oh, yeah, we have to actually have the lights on because of um, different lighting problems with different figures. Uh, this is a more recent Luke Skywalker. I think it's from The Force Awakens. It's not a good figure, but it's it'll service us for this. It's got the same articulation as a... Uh, uh, same as articulation as a um, Star Wars figure did in 1978. The ones we sent away for... Head turned sideways, armed up and down, legs up and down. It's the five point of articulation garbage that, quite frankly, is vastly overpriced and always has been. Um, I don't know why anyone would ever be satisfied with this. It could have been a statue and it would have provided the same amount of fun, which isn't any. At least the statue can be posed in something nice. I'm sorry to the people I actually grew up with figures like this. I don't understand the appeal. And they're just... It's depressing. Uh, maybe when this was the only thing on the market, it was fine. But it's not today. And that figure just... It really doesn't look like Mark Hamill, does it? it it's a like passing resemblance to Mark, but it's not really Mark Hamill. As things changed, uh, Remco and other companies got in on the uh, 3.75 action figure market. Eventually... Hasbro brought back G.I. Joe in this line as um, the 12 inch line uh, died down and then the adventure team died down with it uh, later on. I mean, this is how they ended up by 1983. This is Storm Shadow from 1988. Uh, this is pretty much the epitome of the epitome, sorry, of making a figure in bad plastic. And this hits the entire line and Lanard's the core which was originally called Gung-Ho, before Hasbro went, we have a figure named Gung-Ho, knock it off. Uh, this is where they go, ball joint head, but well, it's a ball joint inside the chest, instead of on the neck. Honestly, I think it looks better to be, quite frank, I'll show you why later. Uh, shoulder joint moves like an actual human shoulder now. I realize he had some uh, gunk there, but no, uh, probably can't clean that up easily. Uh, the Spivel Arm Battle Grip introduced in 1983, originally they had straight arms. Uh, uh, hip moves pretty much like a human one. Knee, no ankles, and a washer in the waist, you know, one from a tap. The problem with these figures are what they're made out of. First off, the blasted washer, because it uh, wears out over years. And I'll oh, see if I can move him back to you know, this. It's my arms, but it's better. And it's a fragile plastic that shatters easily in the chest, the waist, the legs, and most importantly, the thumbs, where they snap by putting accessories into them. What? I, I don't know. Uh, it's probably uh, necessary for the figures of the year. I've not felt a um, Star Wars figure from this era, but I know that. Um, well, not till about not the early 90s, I think you saw plastic, um, rubberized hands. I really like Storm Shadow. He came out the same year I did. <laughs> so you can tell my age from that alone. Uh, and I really like the whole redemption thing with Storm Shadow uh, after he found out he'd been duped. Plus, I, I like the hooded design and the urban camo and whatnot. Anyway, enough for me, because I'd really like to just gush over Storm Shadow for a while. Eventually, uh, things changed. Hasbro tried to bring back 
uh, five points of articulation, bigger sizes, because they uh, bought Kenner, the ones that made Star Wars figures, and they gave them all their boys' properties. This gave us Beast Wars. And what they did with G.I. Joe was horrible. If you've seen some of the crappier core figures where they're uh, stuck in a certain pose and have limited points of articulation, that's what G.I. Joe Extreme was. There was Sergeant Savage and his Screaming Eagles before this, but absolutely no one cares. Eventually, when um, they tried to bring 3.75 figures back after an anniversary line of old runs of figures with new paint jobs, they tried to bring back limited points of articulation, and it didn't go down too well. People screamed at them. As uh, you will find out, the G.I. Joe fandom does a lot to Hasbro. Hasbro likes to cheap out. The G.I. Joe fandom's like, knock it off. Eventually, we led up into the Valor vs. Ve well, JVC line. This is Lady J. The main problems with these figures are the bo the uh, shoulders are insane. That that's that, that is way too big. Other than that, it retains all the articulation of the standard figures of the 80s and early 90s. Swivel arm battle group. Uh, the shoulders that move like a person's one does. Yep and as far as I squeak his knees and the damn washer in the waist and even the head's still on the ball joint it, it's a nice figure I like Lady J even with the broad shoulders of a man everyone's got the broad shoulders of a man even the men the best point about these figures though was the hands and the body actually everywhere except the chest and the head actually yeah the chest and the head are made out of a more rubberized plastic actually the Shoulders aren't a rubberized plastic either, neither are the uh, thighs. It's both the shins and the lower le arms made out of rubberized plastic so they don't break anymore. And everything just feels more solid and durable. And like, other than the washer, which I think she still has a screw in her back. Yep, she does. You can fix her. We have the technology. We can fix her. Uh, she's just a far more durable figure than Storm Shadow here. Uh, Storm Shadow feels like you have to be very delicate with him because he's old and tired. He's 30 years old this year. He's feeling it. He's an old, old man. Considering I think he was about 30 when uh, the line started, in story-wise. Lady J here is uh, about 15 years old. Uh, she feels like she's got far more years in her. She feels like she's going to be around forever. Don't you, Allison? Yep. She knows she's going to be around forever. Really like this line. Uh, wish I collected it when it was out. Uh, don't get the hate for it these days. I think they're nice toys, and I think Leonard's carried on the um, spirit of this line. Speaking of Leonard, let's look at the core before we go on with G.I. Joe. This is where Leonard went when G.I. Joe went uh, Valor vs. Well, JVC. They copied a lot of the uh, movement in the shoulders, and well, retained it, but the waist became a swivel, and so did the head. To save on some... I guess it's to save on some part money. I guess. But the main problem with these figures is, and honestly the only problem, because I don't think the swivel waist is a problem. I don't like the O-rings as a design. T-crotch. It's not the worst thing in the world. It can sit down just fine. It's just... It's, um... When you want action poses, it's it's uh, not the best thing in the world. Because you, you take his gun... Put it in his hand. You want an action pose where it looks all cool like he's doing something. And, oh, he can only really do that. He can't do his legs. He looks kind of, um, like he doesn't care that much. If you want to know why I've got white paper, it's because I use it for focusing reasons. We had focusing problems before when I was trying to say. Anyway, uh, this is where Leonard was from when JVC started to a couple of years back now because this is a more recent uh core figure uh this is this is fine especially for how little they cost unlike joe john star wars this is only a couple of bucks not going to ruin your bank account it's perfectly fine it's a nice figure he looks nice uh but yeah the crotch is the real one problem with this but why not have corrected this and we'll get to that soon where gi joe went next though because uh, Star Wars and G.I. Joe, basically, because they're both Hasbro, uh, retain the same articulation from each other. So we don't have to really talk about Star Wars anymore. We can just 
Stick to Jar Jar. I do have a couple Star Wars figures from the later ones, but no, I don't really care to bring them out. This is a later um, Jar Jar. This is when they relaunched the line for the 25th anniversary. This is Sergeant Stalker, uh, Lorenzo Wilkinson. Because, yes, I do have quite a few of the characters just memorized. And God, we can actually see him today. Thank God. He gets a ball joint head this time. He can look everywhere up and down. But, as you'll see, the problem with this type of construction is the back of the head kind of gets in the way of the neck. Also, as you'll see, with these lines continue, the head, neck gets further and further hunched over when you compare to, say, Lady J, who's got a straight neck. She has better posture. Even um, Rain has much better posture. Uh, Storm Shadow has much better posture. And this will continue, unfortunately. Even the claw kind of... Uh, well, it's not to the extent that uh, Jar Jar gets. Because Jar Jar can get very hunched over now. But... Anyway, I digress. The head is fine for what you want out of it. I really like Lorenzo's design. I really like the colours. And I like him in the comics. Uh, the Devil's Due comics, because they're the only ones I'm really familiar with. You retain all the articulation... I mean, it's a lot more durable, it retains the rubberized plastic, but he now gets swivel wrists, which do help uh, quite a bit. Uh, that's one point of articulation I did really like, just the swivel. We'll get to more things I did to the hands later. And geez, you can really... Lorenzo looks much, much darker in the um, camera than he does in real life. It's really strange. I wonder who else looks darker in real oh, Let's see it. Yeah, Lady J actually looks lighter in the camera. Oh, probably the flash. Uh, the waist, which used to be the rubberized joint, has been moved up to the chest, which is now a swivel. Which, uh, checking out how my body works, because I'm human, I don't know how body works. That That's actually pretty good. That's actually probably more realistic. Your uh, leg joint moves the same, except you've now got double knees. And someone's gun feels like they've fallen out. Is it? Yes. And he's got uh, joints at the ankles, which means he can do more posing. Uh, I think Lorenz is probably... Uh, th this is pretty much where the figures were from 2007 to... Jeez, 2010-ish, I'd say. And I think this was a pretty good place. When they started experimenting further than this and using a lot more new parts than they really should have, uh, figures started jumping from 7 American to 10 American and they became very unaffordable very quickly for a lot of people and that caused the line to descend into wait till they're in clearance in Ross, which I don't think was a positive thing. Hasbro pushed too hard. They wanted a nicer product than was really necessary. But... Things changed, and before and after the next figure, Hasbro used a very, very, a much higher point of articulation, but I want to show something else first, because I think this is where Lanard's nearly stopped, and I think Lanard's made the right decision. Hasbro nearly made the right decision, except one fatal flaw. This is Dwayne Johnson from the movie, because we all love Dwayne. I mean, if you don't like Dwayne, there's something radically wrong with you, I think. Uh, he retains a lot of the articulation from Lorenzo. I don't know why I keep saying Stalker's first name. I think it's because I'm just, a lot of the characters I really like, I just I memorize their actual names and just start calling them that. It's because I don't use him as a uh, roadblock, uh, so I don't remember his name. I just... Use him as Dwayne Johnson, like um, Sergeant Stalker. I just use well, Sergeant S Slaughter. I just use a Sergeant Slaughter. Anyway, he's got your ball joint head. It's probably a bit better on this figure. This figure is massive, by the way. Uh, as I was saying, figures got bigger as time went over. This is just massive. Compare him to Storm Shadow from the. It's nearly twice the size. How can you even compare this as the same line? It it's really not. The figures just got so big. It's I identify as Storm Shadow. <laughs> anyway, um, 
do I need his legs actually aren't the same size gee whiz thanks Hasper uh Dwayne retains a lot of the articulation of Lorenzo. He's got your shoulders that move like a normal person's do. If I can get them back in the right way. Your biceps, which are really tight because I don't really like this figure and don't use it much. It's fine. Your ball joint head, your joints at the waist, which honestly feels a bit off kilter on mine. Uh, you get your wrists. But the legs have been changed a bit. You got your joints here, which are nice. Move out much better in these later figures. Uh, but he only has the knee. Now, other than the gimmick and the stupid hand thing, which you cannot take off because it works with a gimmicky toy, I think this is probably where, if Hasbro wanted to save a bit of dosh, this is probably where you should have stopped. I think uh, this figure is perfectly adequate. But they went one step further, and uh, I, I don't think things have been the same ever since. Because this level of articulation is probably what landed a lot of the figures in Ross. Because of the price increase. Let's look at Retaliation Snake Eyes. Retaliation Snake Eyes, uh, if we can balance, yep. Mm, go. You got your head articulation, which is that is an amazing ball joint. There, he moves very well. Uh, probably because he's more upright than other ones. You get your arm moving like a body. Uh, yep, you got all your articulation. But the waist, uh, the wrist, does something else. It moves up and down. I honestly find that a bit superfluous. There's an extra piece of plastic in there to make that joint work. Uh, I, if that costs a hell of a lot of money to produce on a mass scale, I think it's way too much. Then in your ankle, your legs, uh, the legs have eventually got into this, what honestly feels like a rubberized plastic in the knee. Don't know why that happened, I don't like it. But, the articulation of the legs, not only you get your ankles, your ankles rock from side to side. Now, this feels very, very superfluous, feels like it's too much. Probably ended up uh, why it's some more rubberized plastic in certain joints. Probably why figures became $10.00. Uh, not only that, but greed, uh, and needless gimmicks with the figures, because they keep giving them stupid pieces of garbage instead of the accessories they just need. So that's something I've never understood, even as a kid. You, um, and in a figure really need your gun, your, maybe a knife, your sword, whatever. You just need the main accessories they use. You don't need these huge gimmicky rocket launchers. I never liked them as a kid. Hate them now. They always end up in a baggie in a box, and I have to go on a guide to find out who goes with what. And Snake Eyes just dropped one of his. Uh, gun. God, it looks like a Derringer. It's, I'm not the only one who thinks this is gun is really crappy, am I? It's like a little Derringer thing. Anyway, when uh, Hasbro basically screwed their pooch so hard, the pooch ain't coming home. Leonard kind of took over as one of the better uh, producers of action figures. And while we haven't seen many of the figures outside of the state, uh, certain parts of the world yet, because we still yet to see a few here, they did eventually add females to the line and change the articulation a bit. And where the core is now, I think is perfect. I think uh, Hasbro really needs to look at the core, see... This is fine. This is where these figures should be. This is as much articulation as you really need. This is Puma from the core. I think she's a very nice figure. Uh, they've covered up a chest in more recent ones, so it's going to be hard finding one with an open chest if you really want the cleavage. She's got ball joint head, which is really tight on mine. And doesn't move that far back, but it's fine. Uh, you ever notice she looks like Shaundy from... Um, Saints Row 4. She really looks like Shaundi. It's real weird. Uh, normal human body joint ones. She doesn't get wrists, but rubberized plastic, which has become an industry standard. But where she's much, much better than uh, Rain, because where's Rain? Much, much better than Rain, because Rain's not the worst figure in the world, but you could stand to see some improvement. And you can probably see she's got proper joints. In her legs. 
Uh, no uh, ankles because you don't really need them, but, and only one jointed shoulder, uh, knee. But honestly, and you do lose. She's got a little bit of a joint there, but it's uh, now not intrusive like the what well, it was never intrusive. It's just uh, probably moved up there to help the um, articulation here not look so bad. But Puma's probably where things should have ended. She's in a lot of ways the spiritual successor to uh, Lady J here. She has the same levels of articulation except one shifted up. She also has a bigger noggin which looks better. And again, you can see how bigger figures have gotten over the years. Yeah, Puma is where things should be. Uh, Lanard needs, well, Hasbro needs to take lessons from Lanard in this respect. And frankly, I hope they do. Because if G.I. Joe ever returns, it needs to scale things back. It needs to change things to be more toyetic. It needs to stop trying to impress middle-aged men. It needs to be for the children again. These are toys. These are most definitely toys. Sorry, I have to wave that so the camera stop doesn't stop. This and subsequent lines don't feel so much like toys as they do feel like the um, figure arts and play arts, but in G.I. Joe scale. And I don't think it's a positive thing. I think it's way too easy for children to break. And probably way too cost intensive for Hasbro themselves. Also, Hasbro probably has to just focus more on web gear than uh, actual parts. Um, reuse a lot of parts like the 25th anniversary line did. But uh, that's my video for today. I'm not going to uh, languish on it too much. Leonard is doing a bang up job. Hasbro needs to take notes. Uh, this is some gamer dude, and I'll see you guys next time.